Alright, a very good evening Twitch fans once again from Captain Nabs. Welcome back to the channel everybody. Uh, it's been a while since I had a chance to stream, so uh, I hope uh, you guys will stick with me and I apologize for that uh, length of time. It's been... Uh, life has been hectic, as I'm sure all of you will agree at this point. So uh, things got in the way. I'm going to try to be back on my regular streaming schedule. I'm trying to do once a week for the foreseeable future. I don't know if that's going to work, but we're going to try it nevertheless. So welcome back everybody. As you can see, we're still here in the Majestic Encore Dash 8. We're going to be doing another leg today of A Pilot's Life uh, from Simbit World. Today's uh, leg is from Fort St. John, where we finished up last time, down to Calgary. So just finishing up our turn from Fort St. John back down to Calgary. This is uh, 388 miles. Should take us about an hour and 10 minutes or hour 20 minutes in the air, I believe. Uh, probably going to take us about two hours in total to do this stream tonight. So uh, sit back, enjoy. I hope you guys uh, are uh, are in for uh, are uh, excited. I'm, I'm going to show you something uh, new and exciting that I've got uh, going on this Dash 8. I've had it going on for a while, but I haven't shown it on the stream yet. I've shown you Single Engine Taxi. I've shown you FS2 Crew. There's one more thing I want to show you with this Majestic Dash 8 before I call it quits on the Dash 8 and move on to a different aircraft, uh, advance my career to another airline. So, um, as I said, uh, sit tight and uh, and uh, I'll show you exactly what I'm going to be getting down to in just a couple minutes here. So, without further ado, let's hop in that flight deck like always. And there's the audio. For whatever reason, the audio and chase plane just do not totally agree. The Majestic Dash 8 and chase plane do not totally agree, but that's okay. Um, all right, so we're going to get get started on this flight here because I don't want to be uh, too long in the air. Uh, it, it's getting uh, pretty late in the evening. I've actually backed up the time an hour, so it's not totally dark here when we take off. By the time we land in Calgary, it's going to be pretty dark, so we'll see how the uh, sim add-ons looks at night uh, with this one here. So as always, we're starting in the flight deck. Uh, we're going to start with a quick little uh, flow through the flight deck. Uh, actually, before I do anything else, I should pull out my checklist. Give me one second here. And I should do the uh, flight deck power-up checklist to make sure it's done. Uh, it should be. But uh, we, this was done as a turn, but I've, again, I haven't uh, reloaded the aircraft. I started it from scratch, so it may not be uh, exactly the way I want it set up here. So uh, I'm going to go through it and make sure everything is set up correctly here. So the uh, flight deck power-up checklist, aircraft flight log will say is check the circuit breakers. Checked and checked. Uh, landing gear is down. Radar is off. Uh, battery master main aux standby are all they appear to be on. Let me just turn one off for a second. Yeah, that's, that's on. Sometimes it's hard to tell from this perspective if the switches are on. Yeah, no, they're definitely on. Uh, main bus tie is tied. Engine intake bypass doors are open. The position lights are on. I'm also going to put the logo light on because it is getting dark. It will be dark soon. Flight deck displays are all on. The only thing that's not on actually is the FMSs. Let's just make sure that works there. There they go. Uh, standby PTU pumps are off. Emergency brake is set. Uh, external power is uh, external power is on. And uh, main landing main nose and landing gear doors pull release. So for the walk around, you would pull this, pull that handle. Oops. Uh, we don't really need that today. All right. Uh, and then safety equipment and documents checked, FMS initialized. So we're going to get to the FMS here in a second. Uh, it is uh, turned on, and uh, we can go ahead and press the accept button on both sides. And the uh, database expires soon, tomorrow by the looks of it. So uh, it's good for one more day, so at least we got it for today. I'm also just going to put on some overhead lighting because it's getting dark. Even as we go here, by the time we take off, it's pretty much probably going to be nightfall, let alone now. Uh, as we get underway here. It's a pity because there's some nice scenery around here, but uh, it is quite late in the evening. Not my usual time for streaming, as you guys probably know, but I thought I would get this uh, stream out of the way and get another one up on the channel because I, I'm enjoying it and I want to get this done. So uh, we are going to use uh, FS2 Crew as always. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, tell him to do the hey pre Captain, How are you today? I am good. Uh, 
So we're going to keep him, he, we're going to get him to go out and do the walk around and everything else. And then uh, we're going to have, uh, meanwhile, we're going to be looking at our uh, checklists here. Uh, at our flow, first of all, and then uh, at, at our flow and then our setup for the FMS. So a quick flow through the flight deck, as always. Make sure batteries, gens, meh, bus tie, control power, that's all on. Ice protection, everything should be off, except for the engine intake bypass doors being open. And then uh, exterior lights, we don't need those yet. Uh... Fire control panel, all the valves are green on the engines, the APU valve is shut, we're not going to bother with the APU today, we're just going to do the start off the uh, off the GPU, engine start selectors are norm, ignition selectors are norm, the engine start selector is uh, just in the center position, forward outflow valve is all the way closed, auto, and landing altitude, we'll set it a little later on, and uh, exterior lights, we got everything we need there, emergency lights are armed, Fast seatbelt sign is on. I'm going to say we're probably fueled already. I'll check the fuel level in one second here. Let's just check the lights. All the lights are on. Okay, lights are good. And also check these ones. And you also reset the caution and warning lights, but you can't really do it with a mouse. So we won't worry about that today. Uh, these should start in the 12 o'clock position. Why are they starting in the 9 o'clock position? They should start in the 12 o'clock position when you power on the airplane so that they reset their, their logic properly. I don't know if Majestic simulates that, but in the real airplane it's best to always have them start at 12 o'clock and then adjust them after the airplane's powered up. Alternatively, you can leave this one all the way in the counterclockwise position and leave the, let the flight attendants control the cabin temperature. Leads are off for now. Easy gens are off. The walk around. Thank you. Uh, all right, and uh, that's just from doing the test. Let's go ahead and get uh, get this all set up here. Yeah, are those lights on? Yeah, they're on. Yeah, it just it looks a little looks a little dim. All right, uh, so. Let's go, let's back this up a step and let's go ahead and open up that majestic control panel. Check our weight and balance here and also check against our sim brief flight plan that I've already generated using uh, a pilot's life here. So our sim brief flight plan here says uh, today we are taking 73 people. That's a lot of people. And the weather's not great down in Calgary. It's not terrible, but there's some showers. So uh, we're taking a bit of extra fuel today, about 45 minutes worth of extra fuel. So uh, we got 8,200 uh, pounds as our takeoff fuel, our trip fuel. We should only need about 2,900 of that. Uh, we got another, we got a bunch for the alternate plus uh, a bunch for the uh, just extra, just in case the weather's not so good down there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and calculate that send that data to our flight sim. Thank you, flight sim. And, uh, alright. So we're getting pretty close to a max takeoff here. Uh, so, so first of all, fuel, 8,200 pounds. Now we've got 8,200 pounds loaded. Perfect. And, uh, once again, we'll just quickly look here. Looks like our takeoff weight's going to be around 64,000. So we're going to go ahead and set up 64,000 pound numbers here. Uh, if I can just find my... Sorry, just got to find my takeoff and landing data card here. So, what did I say, 64? Memory of a goldfish sometimes. 64,000, yes, okay. So 64,000 is pretty much about a maximum ta max performance takeoff. Runways are not terribly long here in Fort St. John, so we're going to do a flap 15 takeoff today. So we're going to go ahead and set up speeds of 122, 122, 122. I would love to see some realistic takeoff numbers for a Dash 8 one day. Some kind of takeoff performance calculator would be great. I don't have the programming wherewithal, nor the time in my life to do that, but that would be a great asset that I think there's a ton of majestic drivers out here that would get a real, would get really good use out of it. Alright, so 156, there we go. Uh, as always, we're flying live on the VATSIM network. A quick check just to see what I've got. Uh, here. Uh, so Windsor 120 at 6. The altimeter 2990. Just a hair below standard. 2990 and 2990. 
And we can remove that and set. Ah, uh, what's the field elevation? I don't even know what the field elevation is here where I am. <laughs> uh, I, I, I flew the flight here like three weeks ago, so <laughs> I'm a little bit out of sorts with it here. So I'm just looking it up on the other screen right now on my... Navigraph charts, elevation here, 2280, so 2300, so we're going to use uh, 3300 as our flap attraction altitude today, acceleration and flap attraction altitude. So here we go, 3300. Perfect. Oh, don't do that. There we go. Okay, 3,300. Hi, guys. Do you mind if we start boarding now? Yes. Yes. Thanks. I'll be back with the load sheet later. Okay, I was about to get really annoyed there because the last time I tried to do this, let's request boarding, uh, last time I tried to do this, for some reason, the... Uh, FS2 crew did not uh, recognize my voice commands, and I ended up having to just forget the stream, kill it, and, and I I forget what I did, I forget if I restarted the sim or if I just reinstalled sim brief. Honestly, it was, that was a week ago now, I tried to do that. It was a little frustrating at the time, so. Uh, it looks like our top altitude on this sit is 7,000, just looked on the chart over there, so 7,000 feet set, and then we gotta also get the go-around bars up now. This should be here in the disk. Those are fuel off. Very good. All right, and we got uh, heading alt cell yaw damper on. All right, and that all looks about right. The only thing I don't have is uh, runway heading one twenty one sixteen uh, for departure off runway one two. Maybe a left turn on the runway, so I've turned the heading bug to the left. All right. And I think we got all that set up here now. So our PFD is all set up. Our flight guidance control panel is all set up. Uh, we got the altimeters set. Uh, engine gauges look good. Everything's green there. Uh, GPS landing flap. Uh, we'll set it for 15 for an immediate return if we need to. The FO should be in nav mode. He does, the only thing he doesn't seem to do himself. Otherwise, seems to be good. Uh, I have to open exit three for uh, GSX. I believe is the back door as well, so that some of these people are going to board from the front, some of them are going to board from the back. Alright, uh, just going through this, the disconnects are in, box pumps are off, uh, auto feathers off, all that stuff is off, we're not going to do the 24-hour system checks because this is just a turn today, we'll do them before our next flight. Just set, set up our arc do really quickly here, our radios. We don't have any ATC online. I'll hope some shows up eventually. I'm looking for the Edmonton FIR. There is, uh, it's been very popular lately, and we'll talk about that as we get in flight here, but I'm a little bit, almost a little bit disappointed that there's nobody here, but that's okay. We will make, we will, uh, make do. Carry on. Alright, I'm just gonna do a quick little check on that as well, make sure the flap switch does work. Okay, and uh, last but not least, we got to set up the FMS. So this is the one thing that I did want to show you guys. So uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop out the FMS here and move it down so you guys can see it. But I'm going to show you something neat that I've been doing for a while um, and uh, I well, didn't support the Majestic Dash 8 until just recently. Uh, basically it was a couple months ago now, but very recently they started supporting the Majestic Dash 8. So. What I was going to show you guys today that I'm really keen to show you is, uh, if you look in the lower right-hand corner... There we go. It's not a very good quality picture. I'll, tell, I'll say that right off the bat because it's uh, a pretty low-quality webcam I dug out to do this. I didn't really intend to use this, but uh, it's... Uh, I wanted to show you guys, and the only way I can show you guys is to show you on the webcam. So this right here is uh, what's called the... Uh, uh, it used to be called Remote Server, or Sim Server, and now it's called AviaWorks. Which is this icon right up here. 
and it does uh, all sorts of good stuff. It has all sorts of FMSs built in, and it broadcasts them through a web server that you can then load on any, basically any web around. web page. Thank you. So now I have lo I have my FMS for the Dash 8. You'll see what's on here matches directly what's on the uh, top left screen there. So it, the nice thing is, of course, you can be on other screens in your airplane looking at other things, and you can still access your FMS very easily. The other nice thing is that this is fully interactive with a with a, a touchscreen device. You can click on everything in the touchscreen device, and it works. So uh, to show you, uh, for example, setting up the flight plan. Oh, except for my big fat fingers. Press the flight plan button, and you can type in whatever you need. And uh, I'm already messing it up here. Sorry, C Y X J. There we go. Fort St. John Airport. Enter. Going to Calgary. Enter. And enter. And uh, as you can see, whatever I do on the tablet is immediately reflected over here in the FMS uh, on on the airplane. I don't even need this up. I just have this up to show you what's going on on the tablet. Uh, a little bit more focused because my poor quality webcam can't really show you exactly what's happening on the tablet. But it is essentially an exact replication of the FMS. And you can do everything that you could do with the FMS. It just interacts directly with the aircraft's FMS. So, uh, menu, depart, and do runway 1, 2, Saint, uh, Fort St. John number 2 off of runway 1, 2. And that's it. Flight plan. It's all in there. Uh, after that, I'm just going to hit up my flight plan here really quickly. If I can find it, there it is. Just to make sure I've got the routing right. And it's down there on the bottom of the screen for those of you looking at the stream. Oops. So uh, after our manual leg and a no link, we are going to fly to a fix called Rala. The only trouble with this, uh, this touchscreen FMS is that if you double tap things quickly, it ignores your double tap. It thinks that it's a mistake. Um, probably just in case there's overly sensitive touch uh, touch functions. So you some you have to give a little pause before uh, if you have to put in the same letter twice. So like the L's in Rala there. Uh, I can't type in Q925. This is not uh, this is not a Boeing FMS. So I need to do sorry. I need to do flight plan list, and then I can get airways. And from code it, it's Q925. We fly that all the way to Advox, which is number five. So now, what? Why? What? Why did that not work? TCAS system test OK. Airways. From nope. Hold on. What are we doing here? Not from Rala. From code it. Oh, because I have to insert it here. That's why. Okay. So list. Airways from code at Q925 all the way as far as Advox. There, now it's all in there. And you guys can see that on the screen as well. And then you can do menu arrive for Calgary today. Uh, let's have a quick check of the weather here in Calgary. Winds are out of the southeast, so I'm going to say we're probably going to be going into, uh, I'm going to say 1 7 left. On the Flame 6 arrival, and uh, I'm going to use the 17 left transition. ILS 17 left, flight plan, and then this should hopefully uh, add Vox, and then that looks like it goes directly into my arrival on uh, Flame. Let me just check my star here in Calgary, but I believe that is all correct. And with that, we've got it programmed. Simple, uh, effective, and I, I, this is something that I've been using for a while, and I really like this. this they, they, re they renamed it. It used to be called Remote Server. It's now called AviaWorks, and it's a, uh, it's just a simple, a relatively simple system, but uh, it works amazingly well. Here's just uh, the website really quick, so you guys can see AviaWorks, um, uh, AviaWorks.com. And basically, you download the server installed on your computer, uh, run it when you're running your flight simulator. It just sets up a little mini web server on your computer and serves up just these web pages that have your CDU. It works with many different aircraft, uh, which is the other great thing about it. it, it they, they've added support for a lot of aircraft 
uh, if I can find the information here. Uh, here's, so here's the screenshots of the various aircraft it works with, including uh, PMDG 737, 777, 747, uh, the 400 and the 800 and the Dash 8 series. They fly the Mad Dog, the TFDI 717, the Aerosoft CRJ, including the tablet option for the Aerosoft CRJ, the uh, Airbus A320, the Q400, um, and the Quali Wings 787. So lots of the biggest add-ons here you can use. Uh, with AviWorks, it's it's a great piece of software, really quite simple to use, and it, it it does a bunch of nice things. First of all, it's it's great adds a great level of immersion to the aircraft. You're now um, typing on a, a, re a really realistically sized tablet with your fingers typing instead of moving around with the mouse and clicking with the mouse. It also just prevents you from getting a sore wrist from hitting absolutely everything with the mouse, which is also I think if anyone who's been uh, flying around for a while, you'll agree that's a real pain in the butt. So. Uh, it's nice to kind of be able to do some things, throw some switches, and, and interact with the FMS not using the mouse. Uh, also, quite a lot faster when you're not using the mouse. The other nice thing, of course, if you have your tablet handy, is then you can have something like Navigraph charts up on uh, another tab in your um, on your tablet here. So there's my Navigraph charts just with the flight plan on there. You can't even see it because it's such a poor quality video. But anyways, you can s you can see how this could be useful to have your tablet handy right nearby. It's really terrible. I, you guys can't even see that. I realize that. So, but uh, at least you can see quite well what's going here, going on here on the uh, on the uh, CDU on the FMS. So, um, carrying on with making sure that everything's set up here. The other thing we've got to do. The one thing it won't do, and it's just because it's a web page. Uh, it's a, it's it's not you know uh, is is that the no links won't flash. You can still tap them and remove the flashing, but the no links won't flash on here. And that's just a limitation of the fact that it's a web page and not uh, directly interfa interfacing part of the sim. All right, uh, the only thing I have left to do here is put in some fuel information, again, from my sim brief flight plan. Where are you, sim brief? Too many things open here. Uh, so fuel information for the alternate today, we need 1574. The holding fuel today is estimated at 1315. And the extra is, uh, actually we're just going to put zero for extra right now, Tour Reserve 2889, total fuel on board 8200, and our ZFW again right back here as always from uh, the Majestic Control Panel, ZFW is 55886, 55886, just make sure whenever you're double hitting a double button, just double check that it is uh, taking both taps, you know, you're not missing one of the one of the taps there. And uh, the time zone here is uh, minus six now. Now that we're in uh, daylight savings time, there we go. All right, and with that, I think we're uh, just about done. Has to be to close some doors already. Uh, GSX is. So that's done, so the FMS is all set up. So uh, that's what I wanted to show you guys. That's uh, something new that uh, I've, I've been using with most of my other airplanes. I haven't shown it to you yet on this, but uh, I hope you guys uh, see how, how useful this can be. Um, if in doubt, go check it out, and we'll talk about it more as we get going here. So I'm gonna just take that away just uh, for now, but uh, we'll, put it, we'll bring it back later. And I think that's about it. I think we're just about ready to do some checklists. I'm just going to make sure that the FO is ready for the departure briefing here. It will be a gate departure. Unfortunately, we will have to push back just the way this it's parked at this airport. I don't think you really would in real life, but uh, just the way we're parked here, we have to. We're going to take off in heading mode, level 1 anti-ice, uh, no transponder required, flap 15 for takeoff, and uh, departure type is uh, SID, and uh, takeoff power will use NTOP, leads on, no concerns. Okay, so that's all correct. Are you ready for departure briefing? Are you ready for the takeoff brief? Are you ready for the takeoff briefing? Why, is it, why does he think I want to do the approach briefing? Are you ready for the departure brief? Go ahead. Finally, he listened to me. Okay, uh, so we are here in Fort St. John today going to pull up the Navigraph charts just so you guys can follow along here as well. If I can get them to work here. Uh, Alright, so again, back to 
Lord St. John. So uh, we're parked here at the main terminal. We're going to be departing runway 112. It's going to be a really straightforward taxi out uh, down Alpha to hold short of 12. And the Fort St. John to departure, 10-3 in the 1st of February of 2018. Runway 12, climb heading 116, was assigned by ATC for vectors, maintain 7,000 for flight plan altitude, whichever is lower. We got 7,000 feet, we got uh, the 116 heading, we got that all dialed in. Do you have any questions? No, can't do that. Do you have any questions? Any questions? No questions. All right. Uh, so I think we got everything. I think we're all boarded. It looks like GSX is done. Uh, yeah. Prepare for pushback and departure. We don't need de-icing. We're, we're not quite ready to go yet, buddy, but I'm going to just get you all primed up there. Um, just got some checklists to do, first of all. Hello, Captain. We're ready for pushback. Before start checklist. Stand by. Gotta wait for this guy to do some stuff here. The sun is setting. There it goes over there. Originating checks flow. Locking gear. Complete. Complete. Gear pins. Stowed. Pre-flight checks. Complete. Complete. External power. APU voltage. On check 27 volts. Circuit breakers. Checked. Checked. Escape hatch. Closed. No steering. Off. Flight guidance control panel. Set. Fuel quantity. Eight, two, zero, six. Pounds on board. Uh, eight, two, zero, zero pounds required. Hydraulic number three pressure. Check zero PSI. Emergency brake. On. Pressure. On. Park. Checked. Power levers. Disc. Condition levers. Fuel off. Emergency light switch. Arm. Fasten belt switch. On. On. Departure briefing. Complete. Complete. Before start, checklist complete. Alright, and I think we're just about ready to go here, so we're just just pass forward this a little bit here. Ooh, not that. Hi guys, here's a load sheet for you. Thank Have you. A flight. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Okay. Okay. Guys, everyone seated. We're all buttoned up and ready to go in the back. Thank you. If you need anything, just let me know. Alright, we just gotta close that baggage door, which I just hit the key combo for it. There it goes. Baggage door closing. I think we're just about ready. Just gotta make sure that two things here. Uh... Alright, the one thing I really have to do is make sure that I do have this current flight page up and it should automatically start the flight here once the engines are both started. We'll recheck it again in just a minute, but I think we got everything started there. Engine start checklist to the line. Battery master, main auxiliary, standby. On. Doors, fueling lights. Closed and out. Any collision light. Red. Engine start checklist completed to the line. Below the line. APU bleed. Off. Engine. Clear on two. Clear on two. Engine start checklist complete. Start two for me, please. Starting two. Alright. Gotta make sure I match his movements with my lever here and away we go with FS2 crew yet again Parcher check completed bypass pin inserted release parking brakes stand by engine adapter heat 2 associated with engine start all right that looks like a 
stable start. Let's take out the external power. It's off. The generator is now online. Flight deck to ground. Cockpit to ground. Okay. Release parking brakes. Please disconnect external power. Roger, disconnecting the GPU. All right, we got everything ready. Crack brake released. Commencing push. Hopefully. Thank you. Hopefully it does a nice normal start. Push back. All right, we're all clear on one. Start one for me, please. Starting one. right there too, so we have to be careful. I also have to be careful not to talk too much when FS2 crew is listening, because they do silly things. Alright, that's engine adapter heat 1 associated with engine start. Set parking brakes. Waiting your confirmation for good engine start. Yeah, looks like we got two good engine starts. You're free to go, buddy. It's actually been a little while since I did this aircraft, so I'm just going to pull up my FS2 crew guidance sheets just to make sure I'm not missing anything stupid, because it's actually been a little while since I've done this. Pretty much the way I used to do it anyways. Alright, so everyone is all clear, the, tu the tug is clear. These guys would give us the all clear and a little hand wave or thumbs up or something. And with that, we can bring the condition levers. He's going to turn around, he's going to give us an okay. We can bring the condition levers Left max. Is right is clear. And the props will begin accelerating. Stabilizing around 600 or so. AC gens should not go off until we reach at least about 550-ish. There's the 6, going to be about 640. There we go. But they, those AC gens should not come off about 550. Alright. After start checklist. Stand by. Even though I don't think I need it, I'm always going to put that on. It's off. Name must tie. Off. Ice protection. External power, APU. Off. Checked level one. Check level one. Rudder travel. Full travel. No steering. On. Auto feather. Auto feather select. Engine rating. End top, 90%. Checked. Batteries. Checked. Flaps. 15 set indicating. 15 set and indicating. Auxiliary standby PTU pumps. On. On. Hydraulic pressure quantity. Checked. Checked. Hydraulic number 3 and elevator. Checked. Caution warning lights. Checked. Flight instruments. Radios. Checked. Checked. Altimeters. Three, correction, two, nine, nine, zero, cross check. Two, nine, nine, zero, set, cross check. Two, nine, nine, 
zero set cross check after start checklist complete. Okay. Clear on the left. And we are clear on the right. Right, this guy always forgets to take off those bloody control locks and I don't know why. Alright, there we go. Set taxi light to on. Taxi light set to on. Alright, and we're on our way here. Let's just check and make sure pilot's light is logging. So the button switch to end flight, which means that it is logging, so we're good. Alright, we're underway here. Just gonna have a quick check of the bad spy. And I don't see anyone else at all around Fort St. John, but anyways. Fort St. John traffic, uh, Encore 3100 is uh, on the apron, taxiing for departure, runway 12, Fort St. John, 2 departure south from eastbound. Before takeoff checklist to the line. White deck. Okay, thanks. Captain, they're securing the back. Flight attendants, please be seated for departure. Received. FA notification received. Takeoff briefing complete. Cabin PA complete. Condition levers. Max. Max. Trims. Three set. Three set. Takeoff warning test. Tested. Flight controls checked and free. Flight taxi. Flight. Radar terrain. Transponder TCAS on out before takeoff checklist completed to the line. Check. Alright, clear left. Clear left. Strove on. vision and everything else, it's hard to sometimes tell that you're almost from stopping. Below the line. Leads men on. External lights on. Runway. Runway 12. Heading 116. Runway 12. Heading 116. Before takeoff checklist complete. This should be.
acceleration altitude. Flap zero, IAS 200, climb checklist to the line. Checklist completed to the line. Autopilot on. Autopilot is on. Alright, we're gonna let the autopilot do the work now, but I gotta trim away the rudder trim here. This airplane always needs lots of it. More. More. Closer. Check. And we're airborne out of Fort St. John as the sun is beginning to set behind us. It's going to be dark by the time we get to Calgary, but we'll get there as quick as we can. Hopefully there's a good wind behind us today. 1,000 to go. Alt cell. Check. Set flight level 250. There he goes. There he goes, winding it up. While he's doing that, I'm going to do the easy thing here. Pull up my FMS. And what I can do, is no matter where I'm looking in the flight deck, of course I'm looking down at my tablet now, but uh, I can do direct to number 5 Rolla, enter. And there we go. And I can just hit L now without having to look down. Voila, we have successfully gone direct to our first fix. Flight level two, five, zero, set. Wait, takes a while to set that, doesn't it? All right, so our flight level of two, five, zero is set. Looks like we're gonna fly into those clouds in a minute, so we're gonna go ahead and Set prop heat to on. Prop any ice set to on. There, now we got level two set. Use that FO to my advantage. And away we go. While we're at it, let's go ahead and check out the performance page. One hour and 43 minutes from now, we should be landing in Calgary. Hopefully, it won't be that long. As we accelerate, I think we'll, uh, we should pick up some uh, more speed here. And there we go. There is our Encore Dash 8. Let's see if I can find a nice external shot here. Pity this is blocking your way, so we'll get rid of that now. But there you go. That is the Dash 8. Climbing out of Fort St. John, pretty much in a straight line, right down to Calgary. Not bad looking scenery. And a relatively uneventful departure. We got that going pretty quick without too much effort that time, which is good. through a cloud there. There we go. There's 10,000. Below the line. Looks like we are picking up some ice. Climb checklist complete. Set airframe mode to fast. Airframe mode set to fast. Set ref speeds to increase. Set ref to increase. Reference speed set to increase. Set 
There you go. He figured me out eventually. <laughs> I got him there. I'm getting better with this FO. I'm getting better at making him do what I want him to do, which is good. It's important. Maybe it's just me, but these things seem really kind of dim as the sun's setting. And normally you kind of want them dimmer, but for the sake of a stream, you kind of want the contrast a little higher. So I'm going to crank up the uh, brightness on the PFD and MFD. Well, that might be a little bit far there, but... There we go. That's a little better. Alright, we got max climb power set. One thing I didn't do was sync up my condition levers. I just synced them up there. That's why you saw the click there. And not too bad. Climbing through the clouds. It looks like at 250 we should be above everything. It's going to be a nice evening for cruising down to Calgary. Got some deep gorges down there. Nice. And off to the off to our right as we head down towards Calgary will be parallel with the mountains. If I zoom out a little bit on my uh, MFT here on the train page, it should be a little bit more obvious as we go further south. We had some. Uh, it's all green, but up to 9,700, 11,700 even along our route, as you can see, off to our southwest to our right is where you'll find the mountains. How are we doing with wind? 22 knots behind us at 16,000 feet. That's all the wind we're going to get today. Last time we came up here, I think we had 70 knots of wind. You turn around and go back, you get 20 knots. Always. Always the way it is in aviation. You always get the wind only on the way back. Or on the way out. <laughs> you always get the wind in your face anyways. Alright. I don't see any ice out there on the wings. I don't see any ice being detected. Set ref to off. Set ref speeds to off. Set reference speeds to off. Reference speed set to off. Set airframe mode to off. Airframe mode set to off. Might as well make this FO do something useful for me, right? <laughs> Set standard. Transition set 2992. What's the phraseology for this one? Just 2992 set cross check. That's it. Now I don't have to talk to you anymore. We're just going to keep on going. <laughs> Alright, what are we down to now? Uh, an hour and 23 en route now. Uh, hopefully we can get this down to about an hour once we level off and accelerate the rest of the way here. She's a heavy beast today. We've still got almost a full load of pastures back there. Not the case in the real world, but uh, in the sim we could lug around as many people as we want. Although it is fun to fly empty airplanes when you you get some uh, really good performance you're not used to out of them. You get climb rates that are just simply astonishing sometimes when you get an airplane that's nearly empty. But not the case today. We've got 73 people loaded in the back. That's enough to keep this uh, airplane uh, operating a little bit sluggish here. So, we do have a little bit of a tailwind. It ain't much, but it's something. So let's go ahead and increase that pitch again a little bit, get that speed back. But more importantly, increase the climb rate a little bit here. Not a big fan of climbing an IES mode in the Dash 8. It's in the sim, it's not as noticeable, but she really does tend to hunt. Even the slightest little variation in speed makes it then pitch up and down, and it hunts forever trying to find altitude. So, IES is not a great climb mode for the Dash 8. It's good to sort of figure out where you want to be, but then switching back to pitch hold is uh, a lot more. Uh, what sort I'm looking for? It's a lot more comfortable anyways for everybody on board without the airplane pitching up and down constantly trying to find and hold a speed with, the, with that much precision. Because it tends to overcompensate uh, when you get small airspeed fluctuations and then it just chases the speed forever. So there we go. We're 
on our way. You know what we could probably do? We're above the cloud deck. We can also take off the fast and seatbelt sign for now. People can get up and move around all they want. setting sun just catches a nice set of colors here. It's going to be a shame. It's going to be dark. And you're not going to be able to see too much by the time we get to Calgary. But that's just life today. Sometimes we're going to have night flights and it's kind of, uh, as much as it's nice to also look at the scenery, it's also uh, just uh, interesting to try and see how things happen at night. I'm curious to see how the sim add-ons looks at night. I have not flown to Calgary yet at night to see it, so I'm curious to see how it looks when we get there. Not even going to have 30 knots on the tail on the way down to Calgary. Not even 30 knots. So we already just passed Rolla, and next is Coded. Pretty much uh, once we get to Coded, we're already almost starting that arrival there. Uh, let's see if we can pull up some data here, just to get some relative positions. the VORs and gives you a little bit of uh, relative positioning. We should see up into the VOR as we go to some trucking past there on our way down to Calgary. Still no sign of any ATC, unfortunately. <laughs> it's not too late in uh, the Edmonton FIR. It's just uh, it's about 9 o'clock. The sun should be down already, but it's not... Uh, 30, I guess. So I said I backed the time up one hour just to sort of give us a little bit of daylight to work with early in the stream so it wasn't just complete darkness for the whole stream. Alright, almost there. Thousand to go. One thousand to go. Alt sell. Set prop heat to off. Set prop de-ice to off. Set prop de-ice to off. Prop anti-ice set to off. Anti-ice, fine, whatever you want to call it. There's alt star. So right now we're showing 121. As we accelerate, we should easily cut 10 minutes off that, if not more. There's Alt. And now we just gotta wait for the airplane to slowly accelerate, slowly pitch down, and then it accelerates even a little bit more. Even now it's somewhat nose up. Then as we accelerate, we should be able to pitch down more and more, and accelerate even more. A slow process in the dash, especially when she's heavily loaded, but... Here goes the moon chasing the sun down below the horizon. Let's see if I can catch a front right view that uh, will catch that sun in the background. I don't like that. What are we grounding now? We're grounding 329. We can easily get 20 more knots out of this. We almost cut 10 minutes off just from that. We had just a little over an hour until we get to uh, Calgary now. Looking pretty good. Ah, we got 31 knots behind us now. Wow. Not exactly a screaming wind. Maybe it'll pick up as we get a little further along. Oh, 
also need to rudder, trim the rudder on this thing here. There we go, that's a little better. Hopefully we can get 360 ground speed out of this. Only 313 true. Even at 250, we should be able to get a little faster than this. Oh, she's a heavy beast. down there, which means the airport is probably right underneath us, unfortunately. Probably won't spot it as we go by there. I believe that's Grand Prairie, if I remember correctly. What was my terrible Canadian geography, apparently, when it comes out west? Grand Prairie. Ah, I was right this time. Ah, I got it. <laughs> In the end, I got it. I'm slowly learning these things. Alright, we got down to one hour and four minutes now. Now we're getting speed. We got at least 360 ground speed there. We should be able to get another 20 knots out of this airplane, but anyways, we'll just do the cruise check, which mostly consists of just simply setting the condition levers to 850, and then you see it cycles to max cruise automatically. A little bit more efficient than climb power, a little bit less fuel burn. But she doesn't want to quite accelerate as much now. But that's probably as close as we're getting. So there we go. So, uh, yeah. Welcome back to uh, the stream again. Uh, it's nice to get back out here. It's been busy. Uh, before I do anything else too much, I just want to talk to you a little bit more about... Oh, man, I've knocked this thing off kilter. With my... probably when I was grabbing one of my checklists there. My webcam is not terribly well secured here. But, uh, yeah. So uh, this is, again, this is uh, AviaWorks, formerly known as Remote CDU and Remote Server, and it's just, it's a, frankly, a phenomenal piece of software. Um, very simple, uh, but the simplicity is where it gets a lot of its power and flexibility. It's just a simple utility that runs uh, in... Uh, that runs, uh, like I said, on the computer with your flight simulator, connects via SimConnect to your flight simulator, and uh, for the various add-ons that do support it, that do provide an SDK that support this uh, FMS input, it can be immensely powerful to get, uh, just to um, A, be able to have an FMS available to you even when you're looking out the window. So you can be looking at the front view like this, and you quickly type direct to something without even having to move the mouse. That's the second thing, is you don't even have to move the mouse fingers are all you need. The fingers do the walking on the FMS, and uh, it makes it so much easier. Flight plan, you know, if you want to change the arrival, it's so quick and easy to do without even using the mouse, which is just fantastic. Um, it's it's just such a powerful tool, and then having it usually sitting in a place rel relatively close to you um, also then makes it convenient to access things like your Navigraph charts on a second tab in your web browser. This will work on anything that has a web browser. You can put this on your laptop, although if you don't have a touch screen, it may not be as useful. Um, you can put this on your you can put this on your cell phone if you wanted to. You can check, it, even if you don't want to use it on your cell phone, you can be walking around the house and at least check the, the progress page on your FMS from your cell phone while you're walking around the house without having to, uh, you know, glance back at the computer while you're grabbing lunch or whatever. So, uh, again, a very useful tool, super useful. Uh, very flexible. Um, it supports a number of different aircraft. Um, just to show you some of the ones I have on here as well, 777. And the web server runs, it, it sort of doesn't pay attention to what aircraft you have loaded, it just simply uh, has the FMS running in the background on different uh, different ports on the same web server. 
and uh, if the if it's not active it just simply shows a timeout message like this one is showing right here it just says FMC timeout at the bottom there uh, but any any of those FMSs they're there they're, they're running all the time and then as soon as you load the aircraft then it, it directly connects to the FMS and Q400 CDU is my most popular one lately now for those of you that are looking at this and saying, hey, that's useful, I'd, I'd like to give that a try. There is a trial version that you can that you can uh, use with AviWorks here. So there is a cost to license this. However, there is a free trial that's available to everyone. The difference between the free trial and the uh, license software is that with the free trial, you can see everything, but the touchscreen is disabled. You can't, can't type on the keyboard. You can only... Uh, you can only view what's going on on the FMS. You can, you'll get the still, you'll still get the keyboard, but it just simply will not react to anything you try to try to hit on it. Uh, but you can see how it looks on your on your FMS, on your tablet. Decide if it's something you like. Make sure it works with your SIM. Make sure it's connected properly to your SIM. If it doesn't work with your SIM, then you don't have to pay for it. But you can set it up. Make sure that it is uh, that you can view it on your device. And then if you like it, then you can uh, order the license. Uh, the licenses are. 10 euros per aircraft so but there are also combination deals if you want to do multiple combinations but uh, it's 10 euros basically per aircraft that you want to license this for so for the uh, Q400 it's 10 euros if you want to add the NGX to your if you want to add a license for the NGX uh, that'll be another 10 euros however they do have a number of different mix and match pricing policies where you can save money by buying multiple licenses so uh, if in doubt visit the website aviaworks.com you can download the, the Download the server software there, try it out, see if it works for you. If you don't like it, uninstall it, and you don't have to do anything. But I really like it. I think it's a very useful piece of software. Uh, it's not the, the best when you're trying to stream unless you've got a setup like this where you can see what's happening on the camera because obviously you can't see what's happening on the uh, on the FMS if you're playing with it here off, off camera. Uh, but in terms of just everyday flying, it's a great tool. It's nice to have the FMS at your fingertips, you don't even have to look down, pop the screen out or anything, uh, and you don't have to use the mouse to type on the buttons, which when you're typing in a whole flight plan, we'll all admit, is pretty tedious to use the mouse. So being able to type on here directly like a realistic FMS, very good. If you use the sim as a training tool at all, this is just adds so much more to it, being able to type on the FMS directly. Again, a very good piece of software. I encourage you all to go out there and give it a try. It's called AviaWorks, A-V-I-A-W-O-R-X. Uh, AviaWorks.com. I'll try to remember to put a link right down here at the bottom of the screen at this point in the video when I switch it over to YouTube. And, uh, yeah, give it a try. You have nothing to lose by trying. And if you have any of these airplanes, it can be totally worth it. So that's about... Uh, that's about it for uh, testing the Avia Works. Um, so what else can we talk about here? While we're in cruise for another uh, half an hour, 45 minutes, we can talk about the topic of the day, but I'm not going to. I don't know why this is uh, glitching out a little bit there. Um, I'm going to try to avoid talking too much about the topic of the day right now. Um, obviously, obviously, the virus going around uh, affecting society also affects affects everybody. It has affected me, uh, ironically, because I'm considered a frontline or uh, an essential worker. I've all, almost been working more, and my schedule's been a bit more random and crazy than uh, if I had been home more. Uh, a little bit of uh, irony there, I guess. So uh, I've actually, I haven't been working more, but my schedule has been shifting more that uh, trying to find time to stream has been very difficult and challenging for me this month. I'm sure that many of you, though, are sp spending a lot more time at home and enjoying the simming world. Uh, I've been I've been spending some time online, and I have been watching what's going on, and it just blows my mind uh, the numbers that are being pulled on by some of these online networks. First of all, that's of course being my favorite uh, trusted go-to online network. The numbers being pulled in by VATSIM are just insane now. With everybody staying home and having nothing much to do, boy, are people flying this network. The network is quite busy all the time now in various places. Not all the time when it gets to be night in North America and Europe at the same time not so much but throughout the day we the Vatsim broke their all-time connection record with over 2,000 simultaneous users connected to the network uh, on Sunday this week over 2,000 people it was just a Sunday it was not a it was a weekend 
but it was not like a big event, which is what's crazy. The previous times it took Cross the Pond to break the records over and over again, which it has the last few years. But this was just a Sunday. Uh, I'm sure there were events going on, but there was nothing of, you know, the scale of Cross the Pond that would bring out all the users. And yet, and yet uh, the the network was flourishing, was, was absolutely swamped to the point where people were having uh, connection issues, I think, especially with the audio system, mostly due to just simply the capacity, the, the, the volume of band, uh, the bandwidth being used up by the network as a whole because there's 2,000 plus people connected to the network. It, it's really quite something to see this many people out there simming at the same time. Which just, of course, begs the question, what's going to happen for Cross the Pond in less than two weeks? Cross the Pond is probably going to be absolutely insane this year. If we're getting 2,000 users online just on a normal day, Cross the Pond is probably going to break that record again by another one or 200 users at least, if not more. Who knows? I'm I don't know how many people it's going to bring out. I'm excited to see it. All I can say is that all the airports ha along the route have to bring their A-game. Have to bring their A-game because there's going to be so many people out there uh, online. Whether the, the bookings were gone in mere minutes. Two minutes, I think, on average per airport, the bookings were gone. So, you know, at least the servers didn't crash while they were making bookings. But that, that shows you the popularity right there. When recognized, they're going to probably be home still on April 4th. Uh, most people in Europe and North America are still going to be home on April 4th. It's going to be an absolutely insane event. And the bookings for the event went so quickly. You can imagine there's going to be hundreds, hundreds and hundreds, if not a thousand non-event flights potentially flying in and out of all of these uh, well-staffed airports. It's going to be just absolute madness. If you're available for any part of the day on April 4th, starting early in the morning at, uh, I think they get started, I think they get started at 10 Zulu if you're available for and then they'll go for eight to ten hours after that available at any point during that day to fly come on the Vatsim network fly it's going to be the busiest day in Vatsim's history i can pretty much guarantee it uh every airport is gonna it's probably going to be busier than their real world counterparts there's probably gonna be more pilots flying on the Vatsim network especially flying across the pond on the Vatsim network than there will be real airplanes flying across the pond on that day it's going to be absolute madness so if you're around please join us that day it's going to be tons of fun um i'm hoping to control i don't know if i'm going to get a chance to stream it as well i would like to stream it that's my goal is to stream it i don't know if it's going to work out but uh i would like to I, it's just so much fun is had by all so uh, please come and join us we're going to have uh we're going to smash the, the all-time traffic record on this network i'm pretty sure It is just a little bit uh, sad out there to see all these airplanes parked out there too, that they're not flying anymore. But on the other side too, uh, it's nice to see so many, so many companies stepping up, and in this flight sim world especially, so many companies stepping up. I want to say thank you to all the companies that have gone out there and said, you know what, you guys are all stuck at home doing absolutely nothing. We're going to offer you guys freebies. Uh, I can't believe the number of freebies that have been offered by all sorts of companies. One company did it, I think, and, and just everyone just hopped on and said, you know what? We've made a lot of revenue over the years. We've The community supported us. We're going to support the community back. Uh, in most cases, it's not the brand new airports by any means. It's something that's usually a couple of years old that they probably made a little bit of money off of. But nevertheless, just throwing out free airports, you know, even just one airport out of your catalog. Latin, Latin VFR has a catalog of, what, 30 plus airports take one airport, throw it out there and say, you know what, you guys can download this for free all you want for, I uh, probably, I guess, I think they've set up, most people are doing like seven days um, to have that and just say, just throw that out there and just say, guys, this is for you. Enjoy this airport. It's, it, it's, it's so wonderful to see that the developers, you know, they're not just all here for the money they love this community they want to support this community they recognize that everybody is stuck at home it's a it's a it's a lousy situation for us all to be in not all of us are stuck at home but most people are stuck at home for a long period of time here and you know just a chance to a show off some of their good some of their good, good scenery support the community i imagine those airports that have been offered for free are suddenly getting a lot of traffic a lot of people flying in especially on bats and those airports have suddenly got to be staffed because people are trying out the scenery and saying hey let's check out some of these uh, nice free airports we've got and some nice free airplanes as well from uh, uh, from A2A simulations, and uh, I think somebody else stepped up and, and also offered a free airplane. Uh, 
Um, it just so nice to see. See, just so nice to see you guys supporting the community. So, from from as as a member of the community, who uh, you know, I don't make any revenue off of this really, but I but I'm happy to uh, participate and help support those developers. Thank you guys for supporting us in our time of need here and providing us with some free uh, free software to give us to try out, expand our horizons a little bit. It's uh, it's going to be a long slog. There's no doubt about it. We're going to be home for weeks and weeks, most of us, and. Uh, it's going to be a little bit, uh, a little bit of a shame when everyone does have to go back to work, and the simming <laughs> will obviously drop off a little bit. But enjoy it now. Enjoy your little vacation while you can. Look upon it as a as a vacation, as a staycation. Enjoy what you got at your house, and be grateful for what you've got. I think that's one thing that we're all going to take away from this: is be grateful for what you've got, because we are all we're all in this together. And uh, so many of us live in such a consumerist society that uh, it's nice to stop and take stock of, you know what, I don't need to go out and have all the latest things because I've, I, we have so much already in our lives and we have people in our lives especially too. It's a good chance to spend so much more time with people that we often take for granted that we don't spend enough time with anymore. So it's a, it's a nice opportunity to, of course I'm not talking about going out in big groups, but I'm talking about families. Um, so many of us work so hard to support our families and it's so nice to be able to really come home and spend a lot of dedicated time with, with our families that uh, we, we wouldn't otherwise we'd have found a find hundred reasons to get out of the house and we have this, that and the next thing to do and it's nice to be home and just uh, enjoying some of that family time so I'm you know, trying to make the best of a bad, of a bad situation and, and spend as much time as I can with the family and I hope that those of you, uh, I hope most of you out there as do, are doing the same, are spending a little bit more time with your family. Talk to them, get to know them more. You, you, we, we spend so much time ignoring the people around us nowadays, obsessed with digital devices as I sit here staring at a screen and talking to uh, some virtual, uh, virtual patrons here. But uh, take some time to talk to those people around you, have a real conversation. Pick up the telephone and make a phone call instead of texting people. It's also a nice way to reach out and to hear people's voices. It's to, to go out there and make a phone call. Because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a weird world out there. I've spent a, quite a bit of time out there now. Unfortunately, as a frontline worker, I'm out there, uh, you know, heading back and forth to work, being at work. And it, it's, it's sad, first of all, working in the aviation industry to see so many people unfortunately being laid off and, and that's something that uh, I've been lucky enough to avoid but for all of the, those of you that are laid off uh, I feel your pain and I'm, I, 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 I hope that we're all back to work soon I hope that this is very temporary very short lived and I hope that you guys are all back to work soon um, who could have seen this coming Honestly, a month ago, when I did my last stream, this was barely even still coming, and that was only three weeks ago. Uh, I think it was March 5th, so it, it, was, it wasn't even three full weeks ago I did my last stream. And we sort of were seeing the, the, the shutdowns coming at that point, but still they were not. I, I'm just amazed at the velocity of the changes, unprecedented changes in, this, uh, in our world in the last uh, couple of uh, couple of weeks, day by day, the velocity of changes. Uh, we've never seen anything like this in, in recent human history. And I just, uh, especially for people in aviation, uh, people in healthcare are being, uh, are being just uh, dealing with the onslaught. Those that aren't dealing with the onslaught yet are getting ready for it. They're staring it down because they know it's coming. And uh, so thank you to all those healthcare workers out there putting themselves on the line every day and all the other essential workers out there putting themselves on the line. The grocery workers who are getting pay raises because they are now considered essential workers. I'm so happy to see that. Uh, it's a pity it's temporary. But uh, nevertheless, I'm happy to see that. Uh, I'm just happy to s I'm just happy to see uh, you know people valuing really valuable people now. The athletes are not important. The The pop stars are not important. The TV and movie stars are not important. It's, it's the people who actually bring you what you truly need in life every day. The food you eat, who 
keep your lights on and keep the water flowing into your pipes. Those are the people who are truly important. Those are the those are the essential people in society. And, and wow, what a what a situation it's taken to really remember what's truly important in in the society. But just from an aviation perspective, it's just sad. The airways out there are so silent. Um, and, and the airport's not quite empty yet, but getting very close. Probably more staff than uh, passengers in the airports most of the time. Sad to see all these airplanes parked too. And those also represent people who are not working, people who are at home, people who are potentially laid off. What a challenging thing to do layoffs on an airline as well. Um, especially on such short notice. Uh, if you're flying a single type airline as we are here so we've got we're here on WestJet Encore uh, Encore is a single type operator they own they only operate the Dash 8 it's a relatively simple thing to, to do layoffs when you only have a single type because then you just simply go through the seniority list in reverse seniority order un until you've uh, until you've unfortunately laid off enough people when you're talking about a large airline though with multiple types of aircraft what a difficult thing to do uh, layoffs in reverse seniority order because you're going to have people, you're going to be laying off too many people on certain aircraft types and not enough people on other aircraft types to match the demand. How do you reconcile that? Do you offer people a downgrade? Do you spend three months retraining them to fly another airplane? When in reality this, we are all hoping that this downturn in travel will only last three months and that in three months everyone's going to be uh, moving back to flying as they were before. So what a hard thing for the major airlines, for the uh, the multi-type airlines to try and, and, and do a, a layoff. How do you how do you do it in a fair seniority-based system when people are type, trained on different types of airplanes and, and the airplanes you're parking are based on demand, not on not on who's on what airplane. So there's I think a lot of airlines are are hesitant, certainly with the flight crew with the pilots to try and to to to, to, to go to layoffs as much as they need to to save money to keep going through this crisis it's going to be hard for them to really do it realistically they can't uh, they can't lay off the people that are not working the, the, usually the people flying the international flights are the ones that are cut off the most those are usually the most senior people in the company do you lay them off most <laughs> i don't think uh, that's going to happen in most unionized companies anyways the senior people are going to be like no i want to continue getting paid so then you stay spend uh, you know six to eight weeks retraining them on to fly a smaller airplane by the time they're they're checked out on the smaller airplane guess what the uh the crisis is over you can go back to flying your your, your heavy again so uh, that's why i think you're seeing the unless the airline shuts down altogether as has been the case with a number of airlines especially here in canada um you're not going to see uh, layoffs at uh, at air canada is, is really is the only major multi-type airline in canada and because it serves so many destinations They've cut back their network substantially. Uh, the, the numbers are, are, are quite phenomenal. The international destinations went from 106, no, 103 down to 6. The transporter, the uh, Canada to US flights, they went from 53 down to 13, and the domestic destinations from 60 down to 40. It's a huge cut to the network, but they've only laid off about 600 pilots, which is only a couple percent of their, their pilot uh, pool because they can't lay off too many more. It's it's difficult to lay to, to do it because the people who are usually the lower seniority are the ones flying the smaller airplanes, which are the ones that are flying more of the routes these days. The international network is essentially done. I think they parked every triple seven except for about two or three of them, which we're just going to do Vancouver to Toronto and back a couple times a day, and that's basically it for the triple sevens. They're not doing any overseas flying. A couple of Dreamliners doing overseas flying, and that's about it. had in scary times. Uh, the only thing we can all hope is that it's going to return back to normal very soon. In the meantime, I think a lot of you guys are enjoying this flying. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, I know you're also all watching my YouTube channel, so thank you guys so much also for watching my YouTube channel. The numbers, I've never been higher. I think a lot of you guys are, again, just sitting at home with not a lot to do and catching up on the videos on my channel. So thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you guys for watching the channel. I appreciate that. 
and uh, I'm going to do my best to keep some videos coming. I'm going to try to keep at least one a week coming. Uh, the systems videos, the next one has been started. It's only in its first steps though, so it's going to be a couple of months because I'm still working. So I'm not going to be doing it any faster than I was before. When I am home, I'm actually trying to spend more time with my family that's also all home with me at the same time. So it's not going to be quick. Uh, I am trying to take this as a good opportunity to spend more time with the family, which is something that has been distinctly missing from my life due to the nature of the aviation work. So as we head back down to Calgary, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's check on our FMS here. There we go. Uh, so right now it's saying 36 minutes to Calgary. Can't really see it very well, but it does say it here, 36 minutes to Calgary. So uh, we're going to start getting ourselves set up for our arrival. I don't think it's going to be pretty quick because we're going to be straight into 17, right? Unless the winds have shifted substantially. Just going to do one quick check here. Alright, uh, 7 miles fuel, 800 overcast, 1200, the winds are still 150 at 10, so definitely still favoring the uh, arrival from the south, which is good. we got a couple of aircraft uh, inbound to Calgary, but nobody else is really quite close at this point. I don't think I'm getting any controllers online. I thought maybe by doing this in the evening I might also luck out and get some controllers online, but I guess that's not going to be the case today. Stay lobby. We will just continue uh, on Unicom. Alright, yeah, so the winds are out of the south, so we're definitely going to start setting up for this arrival here. Uh, so first things first... I'm just going to pull this up so you guys can also see what I'm doing there. Uh, so, on the performance page here, you can see it says our uh, weight overhead Calgary is estimated 60,700. So we're going to round that up by a little less than 500 pounds, and then we're going to get about 61,000 as our probable landing weights. I'm going to pull out my takeoff and landing data card, as always. And 61,000 pounds is what we're looking for. All right, so 61,000 pound speeds for a flap, uh, uh, we'll just do flap 15 landing here in Calgary. So flap 15, it's going to be 125 and 115. So ref speed of 125, if you go around 115, V fry is going to be 129 and V climb 152. So we put that in the back of the transponder. But 29 becomes 30, because you can't have a 9 on a transponder. And 52. So there we go. 29 becomes 30 and 52. So those speeds are set. And uh, we're going to go ahead and pull up our charts here and make sure that any altitude restrictions we have here on our star are represented. So I'm going to go ahead and you guys can see what I'm doing down here. So I'm just going to slide this up so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just removing the charts from Fort St. John. We don't need those anymore. And we're going to go ahead and do Calgary charts. Our arrival is the Flame 6 arrival for the 17s. Our approach is going to be the ILS 17 left. I'm going to bring up the taxi and the parking position charts. Alright, so first of all, the Flame 6 arrival. Let's just check and see. Uh, Make sure we've got everything here. There we go. Alright. Why do I keep doing that? I have access to it on this other tablet, and I keep forgetting that. The fact that I've got access to it here on the tablet. So, uh, we're going to join this. We're actually not joining it at Mater. We're joining it all the way at Adbox. I keep doing that. <laughs> Force of habit. I'm also looking at the screen, too, so that's why I'm thinking about the screen here. Alright, so we have uh, Advox is supposed to be at or below 12,000, so I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, 12,000 here at Advox. And 
and then Flame at 8,000, then uh, Lexoc at a max 220 knots. Don't do it again. Then uh, up to max 210 knots, at or above 7,500, then Sepso. And then after that, we're going to do uh, an ILS to 17 left. So that's all in there. Uh, and what we should also do as well is just quickly set up the VNAV here. So we got uh, the next restriction is uh, flame at. Oh, actually, no, sorry. The next restriction, no, my bad. The next restriction is uh, Advox, actually, at 12,000. And then we got eight minutes there. You can see till we got uh, top of descent there at Advox. Uh, let's make sure we've got our approach set up here as well. ILS 17 left is going to require 109.15. And inbound course of 165. Alright, so come down here to the arc to put in 109. 15 and 109, 15, and the inbound course of 165, so the FO to set it just has to do this, uh, well, let's just set that nav source, there we go, set, and then for myself over here, I have to set So there, there we go. All right. Uh, and then uh, what else do we need? We also need the ILS uh, decision altitude here of 38.06. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and set 3600 for our landing elevation here. Sorry, track IRS. Move that range on my track IRS sensor there. Okay, so there's 3600. And what did I say? 36... 38 10 set on the meter there. That was a little bit of a hassle to set that. Alright. And let's just brief the FO here. It's going to be, uh, I'm going to say vectors, ILS cat 1, runway dry, anti ice not required, lap 15, bleeds on, APU, yeah, what the heck was the APU? Yes. And yeah, we're going to park at a gate. Okay, so now he's configured. Are you ready for the approach briefing? Go ahead. Okay. So again, we're going to start off with the Flame 6 arrival here for Calgary, plates 10-2 Foxtrot. Uh, safe altitude 100 miles at 13,800 with those mountains all around there. you got to be careful of that. We are joining the arrival today at Advox. Uh, after Advox... Just going to pause that for a second. Alright, after Advox... Uh, if I can find it there, after Advox, at or below 12,000 and a max of 230 knots, we're going to go to Flame, at or above 8,000, Lexoc, at a max of 220 knots, and then up to max 210 knots, at or above 7,500, then Sepso, and continue on uh, the 3, 4, 5 course until we get back to around 4, and ILS from Wind 17 left. ILS 17 left into Calgary is 11-2, the 20th of September 2019, 109.15, we've set both sides in the 165 final approach course, we've set both sides. The glide slope check height at Ulbud is 4890, which should also be in here, it is, good. 
and the ILSDA of 3806. We got 3810s at both sides. Uh, touchdown zone at 3606. Uh, and the MSA is highest uh, tw southwest of the Calgary uh, VOR at 6100 feet. So 6100 is the highest MSA. Missed approach is climbed to 4100 feet on a heading of 165. So there, after 17 left, straight ahead, uh, 4,100 feet, heading 165, then climbing left turn to 7,000, heading 110, intercept the Calgary 133 radial to the Oksani intersection. Uh, notes, radars are not as required. Safe altitude 100 miles is 13,800. Simultaneous approach is authorized with 17 right. Low reliable, only 10 degree center line. Procedure turns not authorized. 3 degree glide slope. Pappy's left. ALS 2 lighting system. RVR 2600 or half mile required. It's uh, 7 miles visibility right now and over at a few at uh, 700. So I don't think we're going to have too much of an issue getting it. It's pretty low minimums there. Uh, and then uh, after we land on 17 left, it's a convenient right turn off the runway. I'm expecting probably either Delta 1 or Delta 3. We're going to taxi into the terminal. We're about to get a gate. Uh, and uh, yeah. Taxi, uh, we'll taxi at our discretion because nobody is there to tell us when to taxi. That's about it for my briefing. Again, the terrain 6100 is the highest MSA around us, 13,800 for the 100 mile safe. Weather is. Uh, weather is not unreasonable, 7 miles. Uh, it's, it's not, it's just barely VFR. Uh, let's see here. I've got a gate here, uh, Alpha 18. So Alpha 18. Just found a look at the gate on Flight Aware. Alpha 18 is going to be let's see here, over here. So we're going to taxi probably Juliet Hotel all the way around to 18 is probably the easiest way to get there. Uh, yeah, terrain weather uh, weather at the alternate I believe is doing okay. It's not great, but it's not terrible. And uh, operational. I've got no no tams. I didn't look at the. Or I got no uh, MELs. I didn't look at the no tams too carefully. So I'm gonna just check them out right now. It's snowing in our alternate, but it's uh, 2300 overcast, so it's not 2300 broken, so it's not too bad. Just check that VNAV page. Two minutes till top of descent here. We're gonna have to arm our VNAV and set a lower altitude momentarily. Um, just gonna have a quick look at the no tams in my same brief flight plan and. Carry on with our descent here. Alright, so, uh, Calgary destination. Don't see anything, something about de-icing, most of some cranes. New de-icing procedures shouldn't be applicable to us, so I think we're good. Uh, Runway 0826 closed due parking unused aircraft. Interesting NOTAM. <laughs> Unfortunate NOTAM in the world we live in now. Alright, I don't see anything that affects our arrival, so I think we're good. Alright, and with that, we're just getting ready, just about ready to get to start down here. Every once in a while, I tap my tablet just to make sure it doesn't uh, turn off on me here. All right, so we're less than uh, going to arm the beat out. We're less than a uh, minute from top of drop here. I said lower altitude first, don't I? Yep. All right, what was it? It was uh, at or above eight thousand by flame. Was that it? Where did I put it here? Uh, it is out above 8,000. So I got 8,000 feet set for our descent right now. Uh, so 8,000 feet set, alt cell, and VNAV is armed. And do you have any questions? No questions. There's VNAV path, ready to get the power off, and down we go already. We're on our way into Calgary. Thank you guys for sticking with me. I realize there's not much to look at. May try and play with the levels here on the stream in a second as soon as we get this power back enough to make sure we're not going to overspeed in the descent here.
brightness up a little bit, or maybe even the contrast up a little bit. I hate to play with the levels too much. But maybe you guys can see a little bit better. It really does kind of wash out a little bit, but at least you guys can see a little bit now. I'll try to remember to reset all this back to the defaults. Yeah, it really does wash it out. It's just, it's so dark outside, you guys can't see anything much. Now you guys can actually probably see better than I can. But in the sim, you can see a little bit outside. The uh, contrast to the video was ridiculously low at, the, at that point. I'm going to switch to the external view. You can see a little bit of something going on there. It, uh, it is washed out a little bit, but I will reset that as we get a little closer in. Alright, now that we are in descent, we'll go ahead and put that in nav mode. We can watch the nav mode. We can zoom this in a little bit here. And away we go. Alright, we have a descent checklist to do. We don't do it until we uh, pass the transition altitude, so we'll just leave it for now. Calgary as much as possible, as much as reasonably possible. Don't need this stream to be any longer than it has to be. Not that I don't like streaming, but it's already getting quite late for me, so I'm going to head to bed after this stream is complete. But I will try to get this one out there for you guys to watch in the next little while. Again, I appreciate all the support on YouTube. Uh, you guys have been watching an incredible amount of videos, and uh, I think that uh, the Hydraulics video was one that was a long awaited, so I think that's bumped up stuff a lot, but you guys also are really liking this Pilot's Life uh, series, which I'm happy about. I'm glad you guys are really enjoying this. I'm going to continue. As long as you guys are still watching the videos, I'm going to continue making them. As I said before, I'm definitely going to change jobs. I'm going to try and finish out this schedule. I really want to finish out the schedule that I've got right now, but I'm then I'm going to be uh, on the hunt for a new job, flying a different type of airplane. I know you guys like the Q400. I like it a lot too, but I think it would be fun to just see something different. Uh, uh, learn to operate a different airplane. Chances are I won't understand it. It, it. I won't be as familiar with it as I am with the Dash 8, as you guys can tell. I'm extremely comfortable with the Dash 8. I know it extremely well. I'm very happy with it. I can, I can fly it almost with my eyes closed. But I look forward to the challenge of flying a different type of aircraft, one that I'm probably not as familiar with, and uh, see how that goes. Where's my Calgary weather here? Transition. Set two nine seven seven. Set cross checked. Two nine seven seven. Set cross check. Oh, I just have to mute it. Transition two nine seven seven. Set cross check. Two nine seven seven. Set cross check. Two nine seven seven. Descent checklist to the line. Altimeters. Two nine seven seven set. Cross check. Two nine seven seven set. Cross check. Two nine seven seven set. Cross check. Fuel balance. Check pressurization set. Cabin PA. Flight attendants, please prepare the cabin for arrival. Cabin PA complete. Fess and belt switch. On. Approach and landing brief. Complete. Complete. Descent checklist completed to the line. Alright. We're about to cross 
and but in about 10 miles we're supposed to cross that one at 2.30 so we're going to bring the power back to pretty much idle here and start decelerating here just above the beta gates there got to center that trim even more because now we have the power off all the way Six seven six point seven miles to Advox. We're going to be two thirty at Advox. At this point, we're also ten thousand feet above the airport, so we've also got to get uh, ready for the arrival here. Below the line. GPWS landing flat, selected 15 degrees, fuel transfer. Off, hydraulic pressure quantity, check. Caution warning lights, check. Approach and flare lights. On, ref speeds, switch bugs. Off, set. Off, set, FA notification. Complete, descent checklist complete. Checked. And there we go, we got 2.30 knots with about 2 miles to go to Advox, perfect. Charts again here. And the next speed restriction, if you turn the corner at Lexoc up ahead is 220, then up to the 210. And then Vic T6500. G7500 at up to. Oh, what's going on here? Suddenly it went down a lot steeper there. So Pay attention for a second. She pitched right over. Nice steep descent now. Alright, we'll get that speed under control again there in a second. Because it's trying to make flame at 8,000, I think, isn't it? And then it's going to level off at 8,000 for a little while. Uh, we'll lose the speed again once we level off. Looks like we are picking up some ice. Really? Yeah, you got it. Let's see if we can see anything much out there on that wing tip. Set prop anti-ice to on. Prop anti-ice set to on. Set airframe mode to fast. 1,000 to go. Airframe mode set to fast. Alt cell. Set ref to increase. Set reference speeds to increase. Reference speed set to increase. Leveling off, Alt Star. Alt. Calgary traffic, Encore 3100, 25 miles north at, uh, northwest at 8000, setting up for an ILS runway 17 left. Now one thing about the Dash 8, of course, is it's not one where you spend a whole lot of time in the FMS, not as much as you do in a lot of other larger jets. Um, you know, in most of the most of the true jets, you tend to spend a lot of time working through the FMS. Almost everything is done through the FMS. Speed control, VNAV landing, even tuning and tuning and uh, flying the ILSs are is done through the FMS. Um, the Dash 8 is still a little bit more of an old-fashioned manual airplane, so I I'm not tending to use the FMS as much, but uh, I've got it sitting up here. I've barely touched it. That's still good to have it at your fingertips, I find. It's a very nice thing to have it at your fingertips, ready to use. Um, and certainly in the bigger jets, in the 4.7, in the 3.7, the 777, I'm constantly using it because you're constantly using it to adjust your speed, your descent, put in restrictions. 
and make sure you beat everything and the auto thrust and everything just works based on what's programmed into the FMS. So you tend to need it a lot more. But that's not to say that it's not useful in the dash because it still is nice to have it as a system where you can go in and type directly into it, press the buttons directly. Alright, 220 speed limit here as we make the turn at Lexoc. Not seeing too much out there in Calgary today. Here is a nice city down there, but we seem to be lost in the clouds. Let's see, yeah, it's in your temperature right now, minus 9. On the surface, it's minus... No, that's Edmonton. Minus 4 here in Calgary, so... Yeah, we're probably going to have to keep the ice protection on most of the way to the ground today. down to 6,000 feet. Alt cell. I'm just going to wait till it sort of rolls out on this heading and we're going to set it up on a constant heading here. Pretty much do that. Heading. We're going to do 6,000. We're going to do BS minus 1,200 here. Try to keep the speed at or below 200. Try to go direct to on the FMS here. Direct to Vic T. And it should sequence for us. 19 is Vic T. And now it should look really good on the. Uh, yep, yeah, that should do it. And that should sequence for us nicely. We need to be down below 6,500 when we get to Vic T. We're going to aim for 6,000. Oh, we're doing fine here. We'll level off shortly. It's been a little while since I've done this approach in this go. airplane. Alt cell. 7 descending, 6,000 alt cell. Calgary ground is now online. So try frequency 129.9. Thanks. Hey, Calgary ground is online. Screw you. That was unnecessary. Alright, we're about to level off here. I just need to make sure I have my... There's alt. We're going to start losing speed now as we level off here. Attention all VFR gear and craft. Uh, IFR get priority right away. Uh, I don't think that's really strictly true, but anyways. Alright, since we're in heading mode, we can switch to now uh, VOR mode there. Take up a heading of 144. Five for the intercept, and we'll arm the approach. So, low glide slope are armed, we're on heading mode. I may have made that turn a little bit too soon here, actually. I should probably zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, I may have made that turn a bit too soon. I thought we were close because I was still zoomed out more than I realized. Looks like. Now we can probably do it. Looks like we're not picking up ice anymore. So we'll go ahead and kill those. You can check out on the wing, make sure we're not picking up ice. Flap 5. Flap 5. Glide slope. Check. And 
7,000 feet set for go around. Now it didn't sequence properly here. And once again, Shot. I did not notice that I also moved my camera. Set gear on frequency, set gear over. Sir Canada 225 with like a full priority departure out of Calgary. Calgary traffic on core 3100 is a uh, seven mile final runway one seven left. Oh, and there we go. Coming out the bottoms here. Gear down. Gear down. Flap 15 before landing checklist. Flap 15, landing gear. Down 3 green. Down 3 green, condition levers. 1000 above. Max. Max. Auxiliary standby PTU pumps. On. On. Leads. On and min. FA notification. Complete. Flaps. Indicating 15, plan 15. Indicating 15, plan 15. Before landing, checklist complete. Alright, just to lose some speed, and we're good. Calgary traffic on court 3100 is clear of runway 17 left taxiing at Juliet uh, Hotel to the apron. After landing checklist. After landing checklist. charts just to remember where I'm going. I'm pretty sure I have to turn here. I 
After landing, checklist complete. Checked. All right, I think I'm on the wrong taxiway, aren't I? I'm on Echo, aren't I? Yeah, I don't want it. Juliet, which is the next one over. So we'll take the next uh, opportunity to dodge over there. Yeah, we should have started the APU, I think, on this one. Yes, he did. Good. All right, but that's it. We're here, guys. We made it to Calgary back again. Another leg done. Another uh, flight for the paycheck. Get a little deposit in the bank at some point. The quiet airport here. Funny because it's also probably very quiet in reality right now. The only difference is that there's a lot of planes parked at the real airport on every service they can find. There's probably a whole slew of 777s just parked on that one closed runway because they have no other pavement to park them on. Not the number of airplanes that are being currently parked by all the airlines simultaneously right now. you guys enjoyed that preview of the uh, AvioWorks remote CDU to see how it works. Uh, like I said, it's I find it a very useful piece of software. Uh, I like it a lot. I tend to use it a lot for, especially even more for the jets when you tend to be doing even more input in and out of the FMS. But even in the Dash 8, just it makes programming the flight plan so much nicer. Being able to tap on, on a real keyboard, as it were, as opposed to clicking these keyboards with the mouse, which is just it's okay for about the first couple minutes and then it becomes very tedious very fast. Very, very useful tool. So I'm glad I had a chance to show you that, guys. I'm probably going to continue to use it for the remainder of the flights on this aircraft and I'll probably continue to use it on the next aircraft because whatever aircraft I fly next will probably support it. It'll probably be one of the Boeings or maybe the A320. The I don't know. Uh, we'll see what jobs are available to me, but something in that neighborhood. Golf, which is not where we want to turn. We want to turn on Hotel, I believe, which is the next one. That yes, the next right turn will be Hotel. Just past this big white building here. I mean, I never did. I never did tell GSX that we were coming to this gate. So let's just go ahead and. Turn and then we'll summon GSX. It's supposed to be Alpha 18. Let's see if Alpha 18 is here. It is. I'm not going to request to follow me. I'm going to hope that it's somewhere close to what's published on my chart. Should be just on the far side, on, on the very end of this uh, terminal building up ahead, just on the far side, should be Arcade Alpha 18, unless there's something wrong with it. So we should be able to just continue taxiing straight ahead to get in there. and make sure I think I see my vehicles there on the corner. Yeah, that looks like the GSX vehicles. Okay, good. So we're in the right spot here.
set taxi light to off. Taxi light sets off. Okay, Marsh was in sight. Shut down. Parking checklist to the line. Taxi light. Off. Emergency brake. Park. No steering. Off. Standby PTU pumps. Off. Power levers. Disc. Condition levers. Start feather. Transponder. Standing by. Press and belt switch. Off. Leads. Min off. Parking checklist completed to the line. Below the line. External power, APU. External power is off, APU is on. Condition levers. And 30 seconds. Fuel off. Fuel off. Lights. As required. Set. Emergency light switch. Off. Standby, auxiliary, main, and battery master. Batteries on. Parking checklist complete. Alright, we made it. Nice. Here comes the scenery running over my tug. <laughs> and we will request the boarding. We are here, guys. Oop. The gap has two crew open it for me, didn't they? Okay. And we are here. Welcome to Calgary. We are back and ready for it again here. And we should have had, yes, it looks like it did automatically sequence my pilot's life from uh, the current flight page, which now should show a different flight. Yes, it does. So that we have completed uh, Encore 3100, uh, 2.32 experience points, landing of less than 50 feet per minute, and that's good to have, always good to have. So here we go with our dashboard, we're getting close. We got uh, 42.86, almost 43 experience points, only about 7 more to go before we get to uh, the rank of first officer. Also uh, it's now close, approaching the end of the month, so a couple more days and I'm going to get paid again and hopefully have a little bit more money in my bank account. I really didn't do too much today. Uh, I really didn't do too much this month, I should say. Uh, let's see here. Pilot career hours generate reports. Give it a second. Although this month I have done more hours than I did in the previous month, so I guess I'm getting ahead. I just have to look at it more or less. Uh, I'm trying to get a little bit ahead here anyways. Trying to do this a little bit more regularly and fly a few more hours. So I did the one big flight at the beginning of the month and then this flight was quite a bit shorter, but nevertheless between the two of them it was a pretty good good flight. So yeah. But anyway, so there we are. Another flight completed. Uh, we are still Still got a couple more legs to go. What have we got? We've got four more legs to go, I think. 
Yeah, four more legs to go. We gotta do a Kamloops turn, and then a Saskatoon turn. And then we're done. Kamloops, again, also, I believe, doesn't have any scenery other than default, so... Uh, it's gonna be a little bit like Fort St. John, but I'm still gonna do this one. I, I, I wanna get all these legs done. I'm enjoying it. Visiting airports I've never been to, even if the scenery's not great, I'm still gonna continue to do it. I could skip the next flight. It's so tempting to, to press that button, but I'm not going to for now. So, uh, that's basically it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed, uh, enjoyed this flight this evening. It's a pity we didn't have, uh, any ATC online, and it's a pity we didn't, uh, we had a few people goofing around on frequency there. You never know who's listening when you're on frequency, so you never know who's recording and streaming anymore. Lots of people are, so you should always operate under the assumption that someone is listening, somebody's streaming. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you like what you see, subscribe to me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash captainnabs, or on YouTube, youtube.com slash captainnabs. And uh, we'll have some more videos. We'll be finishing out our career of a pilot play very soon. Stay tuned.